Let's start with the first measure, the outage probability. Outage is the event where the performance is below a certain threshold. Let's say that certain applications like digital voice requires a certain probability of error or bit error rate. Let's say 10 to the power minus 3 or 10 to the power minus 4. If you have worse than that, you won't get a good digital voice. To get this probability of error or bit error rate, there is a certain required signal to noise ratio. And if your signal to noise ratio below that threshold, then we say we have outage. We have outage probability. Or we have outage. So probability of being in outage equal to the probability that the signal to noise ratio is below that certain threshold. In the case of signal uh, Rayleigh signal to noise ratio, if in, uh, in the case of Rayleigh fading, we know the distribution of the signal to noise ratio. So it's like the probability probability of being in outage equal to the probability that this received signal to noise ratio is less than that threshold. I'm using red here for the threshold. So we have the PDF for the for the signal to noise ratio being less than that. It's from zero to gamma naught. If you execute the integration, of course, this is an exponential distribution. And you know, if your, sig if your signal is received amplitude really, then it means the power will be exponentially distributed. And this is why I had this expression. That's the received power for the case of Rayleigh channel. If you, if you execute the integration, and that's not difficult to integrate for the case of, uh, for the case of uh, Rayleigh exponential, you get one minus the following expression. So what is this? It's the probability of being in outage. Okay, this is the probability of being in outage. Now, uh, if you want to find what is the signal to noise ratio that guarantees a certain uh, threshold. So we can solve here backwards. Okay, we can solve this expression uh, for the probability of being an outage. And I get probability of being out. I solve for this green expression. Uh, so we take ln of both uh, sides. And then we get the following expression from here to here. If you take ln from, uh, if you take one to the side, and you flip, it will become one. Okay, let's do it here with the pin. If you take this P out here, and you take this, it becomes positive to the other side. We take ln of both sides, and then we, uh, add with a little bit of arrangement, we have a minus sign, and we get the following expression. So that's solving for the required signal to noise ratio. If you subtract these from each other, you get what we call, that's the threshold, and this is the, your signal to noise ratio average. If you subtract them, that will give you the fading margin. What's the fading margin? The fading margin is defined to be the additional signal to noise ratio required to meet the target outage. Whether it's 10 to power minus 3 or minus 6, this is just an example. So it is this minus that. It's the difference, which is equal to the following expression in dB. So that's the fading margin. How much we have more than the minimum required? So the outage can also be defined uh, in, in terms of shadowing. Here we looked at uh, gamma S. We can look at gamma bar. So whatever uh, requirement we have, gamma bar or gamma S or gamma double bar, that will define uh, what we look for. So this would impose fade margin on the signal to noise ratio after path loss and shadowing. So that's if you use this expression. We can use that expression or you can define it overshadowing and we, we, we got the following expression. Now let's do an example. Determine the minimum required signal to uh, bit, uh, signal to noise ratio per bit, gamma bar, for the, for the binary phase shift keying modulation in slow relay feeding such that for 90%, 95% of the time or 95% of the locations, the probability of error is less than or equal to 10 raised to the minus 4. Let's first translate this number for binary phase shift keying. We find what is the required signal to noise ratio. So for binary phase shift keying modulation in identified Gaussian noise channel, the target, or in general, to start with, for binary phase shift keying, the target bit error rate is obtained to be that's from the expression of the signal to noise ratio for this modulation technique. So if you look in this expression and we solve for as function of gamma, that I will make this equal to minus 10 to the power of 4. And if we solve for using an inverse Q function, I will get gamma B should be uh, 
uh, 8.5 dB. So we have only one unknown here, which is gamma B. Okay, and this Q of this expression must equal to 10 to minus 4. Let's just mark this. These two guys should equal to each other. And the only unknown here is gamma B. I solve for this gamma B, and that should be, should be 8.5 dB. And that would be our threshold, because that will give me the minimum required probability of error. So we ask ourselves, what, what are we going to get out of probability? Out of probability, if, if, if the signal-to-noise ratio is less than this threshold. So the one that we got here is redefining, it is gamma B, but it's, it's calculated at the threshold. So this outage probability should be less than 0.05%. That's 1 minus 1, 9.5. So because here, we would like to determine the required, such that in 95%, we have no outage. So which means the outage probability would be 1 minus 0 0.95, which is 0 0.05. Okay, so now we go back to our expression. That's the expression from the previous slide, which give you the required average signal to noise ratio in terms of the threshold. Of course, we are doing things in dB here, so uh, so 8.5 dB. So to convert back to the linear scale, we divide by 10, and 10, that's to go to the conversion. And that's 0 0.05, because we're giving the, avail the availability is 0.95, so the probability of being in outage would be 1 minus that. If you substitute in the expression, and then you can find that you get a number, and then you, you can equate it to 21.4 dB. So you get your answer, and you can equate that to the value in dB. The second measure is the average error probability. Let's say that during the time from T0 to T1, the, the signal-to-noise ratio is constant. So the time where the average is, is constant, we also send many symbols. Now, every symbol, as in this case, we'll see a different fading. So this is getting a different fading, another fading, good channel, bad channel. So what do we do? We find the average symbol error probability. It's made of two things, now lots for the color. We're looking for symbol, average symbol error probability. We're going to integrate over the probability of symbol error, and we're going to scale that by uh, the Gaussian, uh, the probability of, of, of the given channel. So this is the average in green. This is the average, the probability of symbol error in identified Gaussian noise with signal to noise ratio gamma. Since we have different PDF, we're going to scale that. So in the case of fading channels, you know that the channel tabs are Gaussian, which means that we have Rayleigh envelope, which means that the probability of uh, the signal to noise ratio would be exponential. So Rayleigh channels, Rayleigh amplitude envelopes result in exponential signal to noise ratio. And remember that for the case of uh, binary, symbols and bit are the same. So uh, if you look at gamma s and gamma b, they just look, they just become the same. So we can say now the probability of symbol error, if you consider the case of binary phase shift keying, so this expression is for the case of binary phase shift keying, and this is the exponential distribution of the SNR. And if you perform the integration, we get the following expression. This is the exact expression for the performance of binary phase shift keying in the case of Rayleigh channels or exponential signal to noise ratio. This expression, as we're going to see in the next slide, uh, at high signal to noise ratio can be approximated with 1 over 4 gamma s. So let's see this expression in the diagram. Once more here we see that the y-axis is the probability of error, the x-axis is the signal-to-noise ratio where bit. And we can see that the red curve shows you the, the case of additive white Gaussian noise channel where we have the performance falls like a waterfall as we increase the signal-to-noise ratio. So this is the case of binary phase shift keying or QPSK. So this is this figure is just for coherent PSK or QPSK. They have the same performance. Now, if you look at the difference, uh, let's say at 10 raised to power minus 3, you can find that there is a difference of 17.2 dB, that's almost 7, that's almost 73, the, the, the difference between them will be about 17.3 dB, which, equal, which is equivalent to linear scale to 52 times. That means uh, we would require 
52 times the amount of energy or 7.2 dB extra energy in the signal to noise ratio per bit to get the same performance. That's a huge amount of loss due to fading. So this is the identified Gaussian noise if you like wired and this is the wireless channel. Notice that the blue curve is the exact expression for the equation which we have here while the green curve is the approximate as we which become which they become the same almost at high signal to noise ratio. This is more exact and this is an approximate. And the third uh, measure that we can have is the combined outage and average probability. The concept goes like this. Let's say that the outage, there is outage when the signal to noise ratio falls below a, th a certain threshold. When there is no outage, there is a target, we will be using a certain, we, we get a targeted average error probability. So we have two things, we have the outage and we have a given probability. So uh, to get an example, let's say that we have binary phase shift keying, which is the simple example we deal with. We have binary phase shift keying signaling over a channel with relay fading and shadowing of 18 dB. This shadowing will help you out to find the required signal to resolution. We have shadowing of 18 dB. All right, so we here we want the average signal to signal to uh, signal the average symbol error rate should be below 10 to the power minus four for most of the time. Let's say 99 percent. So this is a combined measure. We have error probability, and we have certain amount of time. How do we deal with this problem? It's an important because it combines outage and average error probability. So our task first is to find to set sigma s double average or double bar to achieve a certain target and then we will try to find how should we set to achieve the target at different rate and then of course we'll try at, at different numbers so we can see how much is the requirement and the signal to noise ratio if you want to guarantee 99 percent or 99.999 percent is almost perfect or just 95 percent so let's see how much it takes now let's look at the solution. For a given uh, gamma double bar, the signal to noise ratio vary according to shadowing and multipath. So if we look at the average gamma double bar, the signal to noise ratio double bar, we would like to make sure that it's above the threshold. And if you want uh, to get this probability of error, remember that we have gamma double bar and sigma s will be a kind of normal distribution. So what do we do? If you go back to the curve, if you go back to our curve here for the, the relation between the signal to noise ratio and probability of error, the question specified that we want the error to be less than 10 raised to the power minus 4 over Rayleigh fading. So either we use the equation for, for the Rayleigh distribution performance, or we can look at the graph, for example, at 10 raised to the power minus 4. If we draw a line here, this line will intersect at 34 dB. So we want to make sure that signal to noise ratio bar is greater than 34 dB. So the probability of error will give us uh, the signal to noise ratio bar. Now in the same question, we are told that we want to this to be more than uh, the case for 99%. So sigma uh, or the signal to noise ratio should be greater than 34 for 99% of the time. Remember that the distribution is going to be Gaussian. And to guarantee this, we can use the normal distribution. We subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So um, we can say the probability that uh, the variable sigma or gamma bar is less than 34 should be less than or equal to 0.01%. We can use the complement. That would be 0 0.01, which is 1 minus 99%. To use the, the Q function, we just subtract the mean and divide by that the deviation. You get 1 minus the Q function. Those should be equal. There's only now one unknown, which is gamma double bar. We can use, we can take this to the side, to flip the order, we get 0.99 again. So we can use, um, like, um, we need to find the inverse of the Q function. So there's one MATLAB command, for example, called Q func in inverse. So I can say this is equal to 34 minus Q function inverse of 0.88 scaled by uh, 0.99 scaled by 8, and we get the answer. The answer to this one, that uh, gamma double bar should be greater than or equal to 52.6 dB. 
while gamma bar should be 34 to guarantee that 99% we find out that um, gamma should be uh, double bar should be greater than or equal to 52.6 dB now let's do an exercise we had an example it's time to do the exercise so you can read the question you can pause the video and try it yourself it says here consider binary phase shift keying modulation in a channel with both log normal shadowing and Rayleigh fading the desired maximum average probability is 10 raised to power minus 4 which requires gamma b to be uh, 34 db so that's that's similar to the example we had before determine the value of gamma double bar that will ensure that we have less than this error with probability of 0.95% so we have relaxed the condition we used to have something like 52.6 db or so let's see how much is go we're going to get in this case so we must get gamma double bar the average of uh, gamma b in both fast and slow fading which is which turned out to be 1 minus b out so uh, for the log normal case we want to make sure that uh, we get we subtract gamma b from gamma b we have 34 here and then the standard deviation here is just like the one before uh, it's 8 db and we want to make sure that this now equal to 0.95 so since we assume the unit of uh, db uh, we know that this is going to be gaussian distribution with mean equal to zero just like we did in the previous example so the value of gamma b is obtained substituting the value of p out and we get the q function to be uh, uh, we solve for this uh, and we got the, the q function to be 1 minus q function of course equal to 1.6 so that uh, guarantees that we use uh, after of course using the q of inverse function there is no more q now function this is equal to minus 1.6 solving for the gamma double bar equal to 46.8 if you compare with the previous example we have reduced the amount of required db because we have relaxed the condition so the only difference here is instead of using uh, 0.99 we are using 0.95 and there is a clear reduction in the required power so that's the exercise and you try yourself please try 99.999 and see how much you get how much you get in terms of answer how much is the required db and write your answer below thank you